Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. <coughs> Walaikum Assalam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how do we contain our excitement and impulse to want to talk about these incredible teachings, especially when we think about them all day? Alhamdulillah, Allah bless you. <laughs> but that's why we continuously repeat that the greatest ni'mat and that you want to share in this barakah and these blessings that Allah address you and bless you inshaAllah, take the link and share it. But when we put it, our teachings into our own mouth and put it out, we can be responsible for errors. And then trying to follow up and answer causes big problems because then they start to say things that are, well, who said that? But when you share the link and you share exactly what was taught and what came out, then let them contact, help me if they have an issue with the article. With all the Qur'anic verses and hadith that will be sort of published, then let the shaykhs deal with somebody who doesn't like what's being taught. But when we take into our own hand and start to recite things or, or enter into conversations, then we, we're, we're in difficulty if we say it wrong, we get heated and we start to spit out other information. So that's what we found in our own life always was just take the information, disseminate and you got your reward. And you put a little highlight, you send a group because everyone's now digital. You have groups of friends on, on Telegram and Instagram and, and WhatsApp and you just take the article, put a nice heading, some bullet points of what you liked about it and share it and it goes out. And then people let them debate and say, oh if you don't like anything just help me at Nur Muhammad and let them come into our system inshaAllah and then they can be answered inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, working often on computers creates back and shoulder pain. Is that because we are grabbing bad energy from computers? Yeah, everything could be the posture, can be the energy, definitely is the energy because of what we work on and the energy that coming through the keyboard, through the screens and everything. That's why we have the taweez on our body, we make sure that you keep wudu at all times. Wudu is not only for salah. Wudu is that every moment a shield of, is the armor for the believers and this world is a big battle zone. So when we're going to go out from this house or in the house wherever we are, we're continuously in wudu. You have your taweez, you have your wudu, you have your sunnah, you have everything, you're washing and when you face your work, alhamdulillah same thing. And then that same characteristic and if you have a desk and they don't mind you have pictures of the shaykh for the madad support and to keep any type of negativity away you put on your computer screen the taweezes. So you take a taweez, you take a photo of it, put it as a screensaver and that should be on the computer so that not these bad things are coming through the screen and, and just looking at the screen and being inspired towards every type of badness and negativity. You're in a full battle with energy and how you fortify yourself, how you believe and how you conduct yourself is then our, our, our salvation because this is our training. All our, our people are heavily involved in posting and, and the production and, and all sorts of activities. So they're all fortifying themselves with their wudu, their taweez, their, their practices and that don't ever sit at the computer without wudu and don't ever lose your state of wudu without refreshing your wudu. So it's not, oh I just do that for salah, no at every moment you're going to be under attack. And you may not feel it if you're a person who doesn't feel but then you may start to have an energy come and because you can't feel it you begin to have different sicknesses and difficulties. So when you feel the energy coming, they're coming all over your body and if they stay there without wudu they're entering into the system. So it can be many, many leg issues, back issues, feet issues, everything. So it's, it's, it's a way of life, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Is there something we can do to prepare for the red full moon tajalli that's coming this Monday? As you mentioned, it relates to Sayyidina Mahdi Alayhi Salaam. Yeah, alhamdulillah, the, 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 a lot of red moons coming lately. So these are, these are signs that things are happening. And that the love and the, the salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad and keeping that love for Prophet good character and, and good adab, that Allah from whatever goodness are in these tajallis to dress us in these tajallis. And whatever azab is coming to safeguard us from these azab. That's why these talks came tonight about support. 
Don't put off a good deed today and say, I'll do tomorrow because you don't know what's coming for you tomorrow. Any good deed, say, I want to give something for the food, I, I want to do something for the mawlid, ah, oh, do it next week. No, because you don't know what type of difficulty is coming next week, do it today, do it the minute your heart was pushed with that thought. And that, that's our protection, that's the way Allah address us and bless us. Those people whom have tafakkur and contemplation, the angels inspire them, sell your wallet. What? You think Allah is not understanding what their people are doing with these uh, crypto coins? And if you're vested somewhere or something going to cause a difficulty for you and you're somebody whom believes and practices, they immediately inspire you, sell that right away. Something difficulty is coming. So it means Allah is everywhere, it's not just only in the masjid, Allah is in you and uh, closer to your existence than you can imagine. So every practice is a safeguard, from a, a, a safeguard from a, every single direction. Whether you're going to be attacked through your food, where you're going to be attacked through your work, where you're going to be attacked in your meditation, where you're going to be attacked through your finance, wherever this dajjal is moving his energy, Allah is right there with you. So when you practice and you open your heart for inspiration, the inspiration comes for everything, how to safeguard every issue. Because the shaykhs are receiving their communication on everything, we said described before. They may bring an image of a child up and they know that that image means start to pray for them. So it means this system of communication is beyond imagination. It just requires the heart to be fine-tuned and opened and, and the practices to be understood. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa Sayyidi, what is the proper way to make the madad while you're out or amongst people when you're feeling negative energy? Just madad is a simple word, just madad, visualize your shaykh, ask to be present with me that something's not right, madad. A'udhu billahi min shaitani bismillahir rahmanir raheem, madad, madad. And you make your connection. If you have your phone in your hand, you should have on the notes section of your phone, then madad already there. Or your app, if you have the app on your phone, it's already there, it's at your finger. So how, how could it not be away or, or not near us? I can make a shortened version where I'm just madad to the shaykh and asking for the connection of, of difficulty. But if it's an intensely negative event is happening, then you open up and you can read the madad and asking for the nazar of the shaykhs. And even by pronouncing it out loud, you're bringing an energy into that room and into that environment that that would be necessary for people who are having a, a very bad experience. So the, the names of holy people bring a mercy and a rahmah. And also when you mention the names of the shaykh, it's like a bell in their souls, those whom passed, it's like a bell in the heavens going off for them, somebody has mentioned your name. Immediately the nazar of those soul of those awliya are upon those people, watching them and seeing what their difficulty is. And that's when Allah Ittaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen means all our teachings are like a tasbih. When Allah says, I don't care for this physical world like the weight of a mosquito, so then what does Allah mean? Have taqwa and keep the company of sadiqeen. Is Allah talking about physical company only? Or be with them at all times. Their soul is most important and Allah cares the most for your soul, not the physicality. So it means then these words of Qur'an are above the physical world and for the malakut and the world of light. Well, keep the company of sadiqeen means in your soul and in your being be surrounded by these holy souls. InshaAllah there be a blessing and a, and a protection for the believers. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Does wearing a wooden ring? While going out repel negative energy or is beneficial for women if they can't carry a cane? Two different, completely different things. If you want to make a ring for yourself out of wood that's one thing, the stone has a secret. So if, if you're able to carve the, the wood and you live like in the jungles of Peru and you want to put a stone in it, that's okay, the power is in the stone. And the wood is, is, is a, enough to convey that energy. So the stone is the secret of the ring. 
The cane is for grounding, that it takes from my hand whatever energy is coming to me and it has to ground, it's the third prong. My two legs are, are using the energy source and we're going to ground with the cane. So whatever energy is coming, then the positive is coming and then you're pushing out the negative through the grounding. So the asa has its, has its reality of grounding energy. And then we talked last night, Allah explained about Sayyidina Musa that when the most fierce magic is the pharaonic magic and that's why they call pharaonic bloodlines. They're on this earth now and these are these secret societies, their bloodline and the spiritual beings attached to them are from those times and their magic is most fierce on this earth. But what Allah gave for us is that the cane of Sayyidina Musa ate their magic and we know that that cane from Sayyidina Muhammad because every sunnah is in the hand of Rasul Allah. The only one Rasul Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad that everyone else is inheriting from that reality. So he took the cane of Prophet and they turned it into a dragon, a, a real angelic dragon and ate their magic. And they witnessed and saw that this is not magic, this is a creature we don't understand, this is from the heavens. And they went into sujood and accepted that reality. So the asa is an asa and it has a immense reality of reviving the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad So then you take a tree, you cut a nice branch and then you clean it and you have, mashallah, asa. And you write, you read upon it, Ila Sharaf al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Kiram, all the way through the du'a, in fi barakat al sunnat al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rabbi, energize my asa, please. If you don't have the means to get an asa, make an asa, it's just a tree branch, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is there a specific zikr we can use? to burn shayateen when they are whispering or is it best to just ignore? Yeah again that's the whole concept of the energy, right? You have to have the wudu, you have to have the taweez, you have to make all the du'as and du'a ayat al-kursi, get the ayat al-kursi taweez, put it in your house, put it on your being if you feel that you're having these types of difficulty and they should be all around the house. And then you keep reciting du'a ayat al-kursi and asking for the madad of the shaykhs and malik al-khandiyas the khadim of this ayat al-sharif means the servant that guards the reality and the power of that du'a and asking for his madad, asking to connect with the shaykhs and that his nazar be upon you and that to begin to take these difficulties away inshaAllah. And then support and give charity and do your madad and your meditation and these things should go inshaAllah. They have no way to stay near that power. So that's, that's not something that, that can happen. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Yes, Wa Alaikum As Salaam uh, What is the reality behind speaking during deep sleep? Subconscious mind, it can be many different things, unresolved issues in, in the subconscious mind that uh, wants to communicate and, and wants to experience and you watch some children they're laughing and talking about their dinosaurs, it could be anything. So that's just, that's just the way insan is. Now if they start speaking different languages and tongues and, and getting up and growling, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then you run. InshaAllah. As uh, Salaamu Sayyidi, Alaykum and this is a question that I think many people were asking. Okay. Uh, Sayyidi, I have one question. We need to, do we need to be, to humble ourselves? But if someone is unjust and unfair, we should not speak up against it? Nahi wal munkara is where you're trying to ask us. But again this a misunderstanding of Ayat al kareem That's when the, there are nations that, that, <laughs> that quote that and they get people to come out on the street and fight and argue, Nahi wal munkar, what's the, how's the rest of the verse? Nahi wal munkar, ma'roof bil amri bil ma'roof wa nahi al munkar, yeah. Yes, that to stand up against oppression, go out in the streets and protest. But alhamdulillah Mawlana Shaykh teaching that before you can activate Ayatul Kareem it has to be on you. 
So you, you have to have activated that reality upon ourselves that the greatest oppressor is myself and that I'm not reaching what Allah wanted, I'm not listening to what Allah wanted. So the greatest oppressor is myself, my nafs and my shaitan that are all partners against what Allah wants from me. So before I try to apply that to the outer world, tariqah comes and says, oh, first apply everything to yourself. If you were able to fight yourself, the oppression you put upon yourself and your loved ones, then you have the right to now go out and deal with the world. But the people now, they're themselves immense oppressors and then now trying to take the rights of people. So you see a whole bunch of uh, beard or not bearded like white guys in suits talking about Muslim women's rights. Are you kidding me? These are merchants of death and you think they're worried about the rights of Muslim women and why they're following Islamic law and hijab? What are they are doing the nahi wa munkar? No. So you see the hypocrisy of these people and who's talking and, and they're taking the rights of people and them themselves are criminals. So no, what Allah intended for everything is that first fix yourself. When you fix yourself and you fought yourself and you fought your own devils and demons and you find yourself submitting to Allah Allah opens for you a hikmah that worry about yourself. And if you can fix yourself, start to fix the, the loved ones that you have in your life and that's enough. Don't worry about the condition of mankind because Allah has put an ocean of darkness upon people. This is not the time to go out and protest. This is a time in which Allah said, injustice would fill the earth. So why are they gathering in tens of millions of people on the street? Is injustice, oh okay, you finally understood the Sayyidina Mahdi is coming and you're protesting what? There's injustice? We already knew that. You're supposed to stay quiet because injustice will start killing and slaughtering everyone. Not to be on the street for somebody's chair and position. Nobody cares about that chair and position. Everyone stay home, cry that there's injustice, make your connection, clean the oppression within ourselves until we begin to witness the Divine and the Divine lights within the self. And then alhamdulillah Allah said, I don't change a condition of a people until they change themselves. But nobody wants to change themselves, they want to change a condition. I want to change the nation, why are you worried about the nation? Change yourself. If you change yourself, Allah will change the nation. And if everybody change themselves, then Allah change the nation. Well, when nobody wants to change themselves but they're only interested in the nation, means everyone's looking out and not looking in. And that's the danger, tariqah comes and that's the, the safeguard in these difficulties that, you know, great gift that Allah gives to tariqah people is that when you learn from these shaykhs, you're going to avoid many, many calamities. You're stepping out into a horrific tornado or calamity for what? You're supposed to be at home fixing yourself and avoiding every type of fitna because most definitely immense oppressions are going to enter onto the earth. That is a sign of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi It's not that you go and protest and you're going to reverse Allah's judgment. So you don't know what time it is, right? If you don't know what time it is, you're always doing the wrong thing. So people have to get on board and understand this is a very bad time and they're waiting for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam. Stay home and build yourself and hope Allah saves you. Never on the streets, you're not going to change anything. Is a sign of oppression is actually the sign of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, illa sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqata nashbandiyyat al aliyya wa sayyir wa saddatina wa siddiqina al fatiha. Asana! <laughs>